14 years ago now, soon, uh, called SB Insight, Sustainable Brand Insight. Uh, the company was founded basically on Sustainable Brand Index, which it says here as well. So Sustainable Brand Index is a big Europe's largest brand study on sustainability that we've been doing since 2011. So basically what we do, uh, have been doing for 14 years soon, is actually measuring, you know, what do people think about uh, H&M, for example, it's a good example today, uh, in terms of sustainability. And of course, you know, all dimensions and, and uh, you know, based on the, the global goals for sustainable development and also a lot of detailed areas in sustainability. So basically what we do, there are two aspects of that. One aspect is that we publish a ranking every year in, in our country. So we do this in, in all the Nordic countries, so Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Finland. Uh, we're also in the Netherlands and the Baltic countries, and we're hopefully going to Germany pretty soon. Maybe UK as well, it's on the list. Uh, but we publish a ranking that gets a fair amount of attention in the media and by companies, etc. That's really, really the small part, but it's also part of our marketing, obviously. And the other part is that we help companies and they can understand, you know, what are the, the, the reasons behind this? Why do people think like this about us? Mm. We also look a lot at consumer behavior. Svante talked a bit about that in terms mm. of, you know, being afraid of change. That's very natural. Uh, and especially not having this, like, vision where we're going. Because mm. then you're really, re then, then change is really scary. So... So we, we, we help a lot with that as well, yeah. uh, basically. But we also, I, I'm just going to mention that since you asked. Yep. Uh, but that is, I was going to say 14 years we've done that. And now we actually just finished that last week, actually. I'm very excited about it. It's not public yet, but we are adding another dimension, which is, of course, the performance dimension. So, you know, it's, it's in one way easy to measure what do people think about these companies. And now we're adding the other dimension, which is, you know, how good are they in sustainability? Mm -hmm. And that is really exciting. So we started out and last week we, are, we, are, we landed in the first industry analysis that was for fuel brands, mm -hmm. so oil and gas, uh, tough one. And it was really interesting to see, you know, okay, you're perceived like this, uh, but you're actually doing better in some cases yeah. or, you know, worst cases, of course, the other way around, you're actually perceived quite well, but you're actually awful. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it, it's uh, that hopefully that'll bring a lot of new, I mean, We've been bringing a lot of new insights to the market already, but I think this will, uh, you know, increase it or maybe get it to another dimension, hopefully. So a little bit of breaking news here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, yeah, let's, you know, let's keep it in the room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just, I'm going to open up for question in one second. I just want to know, because I think many people have heard about the ranking, what dimensions go into the ranking? We've been talking a lot about climate here, but yes. it's way more. I was just thinking about that when Svante told that it's a lot of focus on climate. That's yep. what, you know, that's what we talk about. That's quite natural. And that's also what a lot of people, consumers as well, think about when it comes to you know sustainability as a as a phrase or a term. Uh, we look at, I mean, as I mentioned before, we look at the global goals. Uh, then we 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 classify them. So we have some key areas, like overarching areas, that go into the ranking assessment, which is you know environmental responsibility, mm -hmm. where climate is, for example. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we have social responsibility, which is, you know, I wouldn't say the rest, but a lot of the other goals that go into that. Uh, we actually have also added, n not publicly yet either, so here's another piece of aspects, <laughs> the governance area, obviously, the, the G of the ESG in that case. So, yeah, th th that's what's going in. But then, of course, once you dig deeper, uh, it's very, you know, it depends on the brand. In finance, yeah. of course, there's a lot of ethics and those kind of things mm. that we look at in in. Fashion, you know, of course, a lot of the environmental water consumption, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, mm. Yeah. And is there, in general, one area that companies are particularly good at, and one that is maybe in all industries a little bit lacking, mm -hmm. you would say, or, or lagging in that? Area? Yeah, I mean, I would say perception-wise, people are also, especially in the countries where we're doing this, uh, like let's take the Nordics for example. Mm -hmm. We Nordic consumers are quite, you know, at ease with with the environment. We are mm. close to nature, forests, uh, water, etc. So that's kind of like, yeah, where social issues are a bit like, what's mm. that? Mm. Is it really something? I don't mm. really know. So I would say that generally brands tend to score better on environmental aspects because mm. people just feel more comfortable. Mm. Whereas once you venture into the social areas, people are a bit, you know, less. They know less basically. Mm. Um, but otherwise, I mean, what, what is like, you know, goes through all brands is that the closer you are to consumer, like 
uh, packaging, for example, very tangible. Mm. Yeah, people they tend to score good in that because you know I can see it, I can feel it. Yeah, I can also re relate to the fact that you know there's a lot of plastic here. I'm going to throw mm. it away. Mm. Whereas you know once you start venturing back in the value chain and say, hey, we want to talk about how we transport this from this mine to that factory, <laughs> that's not really interesting no. to me. So, so I think that that's where they score quite low because yeah. people don't have the interest basically yeah. yet. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, do you have any questions? I see one question here. Sarah, um, I always have this debate with people, and I'd love to get your perspective on it. Um, think of it with a, maybe with a UK lens rather than um, a Scandi lens. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, how much will if I'm selling heat pumps? If if you were here for the yeah. Uh, when yeah. So how much do you think consumers will be motivated by saving the planet and making the decision because it's reducing their personal or their household CO2 emissions versus price, saving money? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's what does one. the data tell us? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's an easy one. It's saving money every day, all the, <laughs> all the time, every minute. Uh, I, yeah, so, I mean, that's the easy answer. It is, I mean, we have these... Um, persona segments, whatever you want to call them, that we follow based on behavior rather than attitude, because especially in sustainability, people say something over there and then they do something over there, mm. yeah? because we all want to be this fantastic people. You know, we, we you want to save the planet? Yeah, sure. I like that. <laughs> you, what are you going to do? Well, well I don't know. <laughs> so so I think that is, that is of course, a challenge whenever you're doing surveys and stuff like we do. So we have, you know, we have a model for that, basically, instead of looking at behavior. And you have this one group, which is called dedicated obviously and they are depending on the country but you know 10 percent roughly yeah those people you can talk very much about maybe the the facts about you know you want to save the planet you want to you know co2 also they are more understanding the kind of the phrases the terms you know the the, the things that we maybe in this room talk about a lot and no one else understands mm. uh but that's 10 percent of the market yeah it's quite a small market for most brands um and then we have smart, which is a bit bigger, and they're more into it because you know it's fashionable. Now, you know, simplifying a lot here, but you know, that's that's it. And then you can also connect it a bit more to status and you know, can I show that I am saving CO2? Well, then it might be interesting because I want to be that kind of responsible person. And then you have roughly 50% of the population being in the other end, and they are very, very motivated by the fact first, you know, you always have to go head first. You can save money. Oh, now I'm listening. And you can also say that, yeah, that sounds good, saving the planet. I, you know, if I'm saving money, I might as well save the planet. Sounds good to me. But I mean, it, it all comes down to, I think, of course, the situation in the market. Now we're in a recession. It's tough for people, the cost of living that you talked about. Uh, that, like, you know, I usually call it like the demanded factor. You can actually charge a price premium. That is that is not what I'm recommending my clients at the moment to like, hey, try charging a bit more or try lifting this out there because it costs more. It's, that's tough at the moment. And in best of worlds, you do the both. Yeah, you can talk about, I think the best kind of communication about this is definitely when you can, you know, you lead with what's good for me, what's good for you, saving money, maybe having decent temperature at home. That's good for me, yeah? And then, you know, well, it's also good for the environment. All right, that feels like a good package, but you don't start with the environment. Start the other way around. Thank you very much. We had another question here at the right. Yeah, um, first off, I just want to say I love Sustainable Brand Index, so uh, oh, good, good job. <laughs> Thank um, you. And just the question is, like, what kind of, overarching topics do you see in the higher performing brands so basically are there any similarities key aspects mm. that are vital to yeah basically get a high yeah. index score absolutely uh i have a lot of models for this uh <laughs> but i can share some traits yeah so i think there is the first thing i want to usually want to talk about is like there are these what i call passive factors and active factors now it gets a bit nerdy here but you know we love nerdy yeah that's, that's good, good. So the act, the passive factors are, of course, you know, this is these are inherent things. You you have a certain origin. A Swedish brand is mm -hmm. all, always perceived as more sustainable in Sweden. 
Norwegian in, in Norway, etc., yeah. etc. Et and this is, you know, not all, not true in all of the world, but in most parts that, you know, domestic is fantastic, especially in Finland. The Finns, they're, you know, <laughs> if you're not a domestic brand, you might as well go home in Finland. Um, but, but you know, there are these things, there are the ownership, you know, for example, cooperative ownership, super good, state-owned, also good, uh, publicly, you know, traded company, eh, not so good. Family owned, also good, you know. Mm -hmm. So those things that are, you know, that they are there, we cannot affect them, but we can actually choose to let's highlight this. Mm -hmm. We are a cooperative, let's talk about that. Yeah. So easy, easy, you know, low hanging fruit. The other ones are of course the active things. And I would say, depending on the industry and all that, but there are some things that I've that I see, and this is can let's like this top three thing I can do here. Like what are the things you need to do? I think first thing is definitely in these days whenever you talk about sustainability, staying true to the brand, yeah, because it's, we tend to, or brands tend to like, you know, they talk about the product and the quality and the service and whatever. And then when you're going to talk about sustainability and then all of a sudden it's like this kind of communication, yeah, very square, like, oh, let's put a PDF on the website and see what people, <laughs> if they like it. Whereas, you know, you have to incorporate it. This is how we talk. Mm. You know? I think great example, Lego, the Danish uh, toy company, you all know it, Lego. Uh, there's been some talk about them in the last few days, also interesting, but they've been doing that very good. Whatever you look at Lego's communication, if it's, you know, market marketing mm. communication or if it's the sustainability report, it's always playful. Mm. You know, it's the core mm. and you can feel like this. Yeah, this feels like Lego. It's mm. it's, you know, it's them. So I think that is one thing. The other thing is, of course, you know, focus on the big issues. And I think we've had a, uh, we had a lot of years up until now, whereas you can I mean, let's take packaging as an example. I hope I'm not offending anyone here, but I have, we had worked with a big food brand and they are so frustrated because they say, well, consumers only want to see about our sustainable packaging. That's 1% of our impact. Mm. We want to talk about the food and you know the, all of that. And I think that is interesting because it has been so that, yeah, talk about packaging, that's going to be impactful because people think that it's a huge thing because again, they taste, they, they can touch it. Yeah, mm. But we're all actually seeing this kind of movement towards the fact that people understand that maybe this is the big issue mm. in industry. So I would say that is actually more important now to be sure to focus on the right thing, the right issue. And you also have to be able to say, you know, this is a super important issue in society, but it's not ours. Mm. You know, we're going to put that here. We're going to work with it, but we're not going to talk about it that much. Um, and the, and fi finally, what we have seen also, I would say also from a maybe risk perspective, PR is more transparency. It's such a, you know, it's, it's a word, I'm tired of the word, but it's really, it's really, it really is what it is. You know, transparency mm. is also not, not just being like putting everything out there, but also that's why I mentioned Lego, because mm. I think there have been some news around them that they actually try to, you know, go from these oil-based plastic to yeah. mm -hmm. renewable. And, you know, there's one of their big goals for obvious reasons. Uh, and they failed now. So they, they realized that we have put a lot of money and resources into this for over the past two years, and it's not working. Mm. We're not being able to, you know, create the same kind of quality, the same kind of bricks. And of course, media was there saying, oh, they're failing, mm. whereas Lego was very much more transparent, saying, you know, we tried, we yeah. put a lot of resources, a lot of money, didn't work, now mm. we're gonna try something else. And I think that is also something that the market rewards a lot. So once you dare talk like that, that's also something that we see as, um, yeah, that's foundation for a, for a sustainable brand, basically. That's very interesting because we started this, this session today talking about green hushing yeah. is becoming more and more of a thing. Yeah. Do you think that Lego and others will change that or do you see that the climate is becoming even harsher? Oh, it's becoming harsher, I would yeah. say. Yeah, definitely. It's it's. Uh, I mean, now we have the Green Claims Directive coming uh, early next year. Yeah. I, I, Can you explain a little bit what that is? Yeah, sorry, it's it's a directive from the EU, uh, and it's a directive, so it's going to be the law, obviously, in, in the EU. Um, and uh, it's basically about how you can, what you can claim in terms of environmental claims. So you can say, you know, around carbon neutral, fossil free, those kind of things. So and it's it's extremely, I read all the whole thing, mm. great reading, fantastic, <laughs> put me to sleep every night. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, it's it's... It's huge and it's in, in its origin, like the proposal that came in March, it's like, this is never going to work because oh. no one's going to be able to follow this. Uh, it, it's, and now the, it's been out and people have been commenting and hopefully it's going to be a bit more like, you know, it's like GDPR when that came, everyone's like, oh, we're not going to be able to talk mm. to anyone. And then we landed in something that is actually working. Yeah. So I think it's going to be the same. But yes, uh, to answer the question, it's going to get harsher because of that. Yeah. I do think some brands are going to say, you know, we're out yeah. for now. 
yeah. we're not going to do this because it's going to cost a lot of money and there are demands here and you know not to be that person but the media and other stakeholders are sometimes you know just pointing saying this is bad yeah why don't you tell us something that is good and mm. what we should do instead mm. so it's a lot of, not always a problem solving attitude it's very much like pointing fingers and yeah. I think that is uh, that is uh, that's going to make some brands think twice we've seen it in the past yep. and then you know we have a you know good economy and all of that and everyone wants to talk about sustainability mm. and now i'm a bit, a bit afraid that we're actually might see some dialing back because yeah. of that yeah but i think this was excellent that you also provide very concrete evidence a uh, kind of guidance as well so i hope you all take a note unfortunately that our time is actually up i talk so much yeah. but it was nice yeah and uh, we have one more break as well so you have time to connect but I'm here. before i let you go uh, i want to know your song as well i don't know you i, I wasn't here. here but i understand there is some uh, i i have that, to choose a song exactly oh one that gives you energy and ma makes you motivated oh well, i would say uh, oh my god this is tough yeah mm -hmm. energy and motivated uh this is where i go over time for this place, yeah. <laughs> um uh, i would say uh, i get back to you on that yeah i, I had a good one but i cannot remember Perfect. the name i will follow oh, up on that so we, we have actually have a session now uh, around consumers with H&M and Kim Nart. So I think that's perfect. I'll let you think about that. Maybe I can ask you, I can comment with a song there. Great. So Marcus will wonder, what, what was she saying? I'll, I'll follow just... up on that, definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for you so this. Much. Thank you.